It's an incredible pleasure to be in the presence of all the talented, inspirational people in this room. Uh, in my introduction, my 10 minutes, I'd like to share how Brock and I became interested in the strength side of dyslexia and also introduce dyslexic mind strengths that we talk about more in our book. So first, from the very moment that uh, we began seeing students in our clinic, we were struck by the creative talents and cognitive strengths of dyslexic students. Um, as a neurologist interested in cognitive learning differences, I was impressed both by the creative drive and also the out-of-the-box thinking that these students had. Over here on the left is a, a, yeah, the student we were testing, eight-year-old, was going to a birthday party and he made this elaborate maze card and he showed me um, how you could really solve the maze, you know, he's just a really ambitious project. This, uh, this this uh, Star Wars walking robot was made by a kindergartner that we saw in our clinic. And I, I love this picture of a spontaneous picture of drawing of a bike um, <laughs> from an aerial view. Isn't that great? But that's not all, um, because other dyslexics showed advanced verbal and storytelling abilities. It's, it's really striking, some of these kids, they, they tell stories so well that you could spend hours just listening to them tell you about the most mundane things, the day in school, the kids in the playground, what they did over their vacation. They have advanced conceptual abilities. Their vo verbal reasoning abilities are spectacular, which we, we were able to measure on things like IQ testing and the WISC. And many of these kids are very socially perceptive. In addition, we often see extraordinary visual gifts, um, you know, not just technical gifts that are, are these children have earlier than their developmental age, but also just recognition of some subtleties of expression in, um, in the drawings and faces or sculptures. But also there are clusters like math and science. We often saw uh, extraordinarily bright um, math thinkers and scientific thinkers, just like Jack Horner and his science fairs, who are winning first prize in the science fairs, either at the local, state, or even national levels. But another gift that I want to point uh, your way to, because you'll recognize it the more you spend time with these kids, is, is a lot of them excel in complex systems. And um, an example of this, this is a, this is a drawing by um, another uh, eight-year-old who was telling me his ideas for a game. And he was telling me about all these different things, all the feedback loops. You go this way, you go that way, and it's clearly a complex system that's really the gifts um, of some of these children. And if you don't have the right setting, you'd never pick it up in the classroom. An interesting thing about the way we set up the practice, because there's two of us, is when one is in testing the child, the other one's getting extensive histories from the parents. And this was a fascinating thing to us because um, we got a chance to speak with a lot of adult dyslexics who are really doing interesting things in their field. But th the other thing is that they really often mirrored what the children were, were showing, to, showing to us in their, you know, what they'd love doing in their spare time or in the clinic. So we saw clusters of spatial talent, mathematical talent, and talents in personal communication. When we surveyed the occupations of um, the dyslexic parents in our clinic, we found 43% were in engineering, computers, science, or economics, 25% in upper management, business, and sales, and then a whole you know, array of miscellaneous um, but, but uh, wonderful careers, pilots, coaches, counselors, veterinarians, that use distinct clusters of talents that, that are also present, you can see, in, in children. When we looked at our social networks, which, which have upwards of 4,000 people, asked to, to find out more about their careers, the number one career that we found in our, our network was in the area of computers, IT, science, and engineering. You know, what do you think about dyslexia? That's a, that's a question that comes up. You know, we should be thinking about computers. I mean, are we teaching these kids to program to find out that they're really good in, in IT, they're really great in science? If not, we really should be engineering. In our book, in our clinical, we put together our clinical experiences and, um, and also basic science research, which we're having some neuroscientists talk about today, to talk about these clusters and develop this concept of mind strengths, where mind stands for uh, material reasoning, interconnected reasoning, narrative reasoning, dynamic reasoning. 
And the neat thing about, um, about these clusters that now that neuroscience has finally gotten to the point where it can tell us the mechanisms by which these talent clusters in dyslexia really exist. So I'm just going to skip through the, the mind strengths very briefly. Material reasoning is that kind of reasoning that we often associate with things like engineers, architects. It's an ability to reason about the physical characteristics of objects in the material universe, largely spatial reasoning ability. Here's a drawing of a six-year-old boy in our clinic. He, his drawing of a boat. I mean, he's not just drawing a simple schematic picture of a boat, which would be developmentally appropriate, but he's doing a cross-section, he's doing aerial views, and that's what we see. We see this incredible talent of being able to understand the object from multiple dimensions. Interconnected reasoning is an ability to spot connections or relationships between different objects, concepts, or points of view. The ability to connect diverse perspectives, to see things from multiple points of view, obviously lends itself to a, a enormous amounts of creativity, interdisciplinary thinking, where we see in, in full fruition in the, adult, in the adults that, that, uh, that are often in this room. Ability to unite information to a single global or big picture perspective, this is all this interconnective thinking style. N stands for narrative reasoning or story-based reasoning. And that's an ability to create stories by connecting a series of mental scenes from past personal experience, as well as a tendency to use stories that recall the past, understand the present, and imagine the future. Uh, finally, dynamic reasoning is, is a rec recombining of elements of past experience to predict or simulate future outcomes. It's very pattern sensitive. It uses personal more than abstract memory and it's ideal for highly changeable or ambiguous situations where you have incomplete knowledge. We think that a lot of the reason um, that so many people excel at the very edges of fields and, and for instance in highly dynamic situations like finance, economics, and in biz cutting edge businesses in Silicon Valley is because of this dynamic reasoning ability to anticipate what's coming next. It can really put you at the head of, of, of many different careers. This kind of process of dynamic reasoning often uses best fit processes rather than rule-based, deductive, or simple formulaic thinking. Um, and lastly, um, I, I want to reiterate how important it is for those who are new to learning about the strength side of dyslexia. I want to reinforce the fact that dyslexic strengths are very real. This is, uh, these are the scores from a student that we recently tested in our clinic. And these patterns of scores are more the um, more the norm than the exception. And here we see the percentiles on the um, y-axis, verbal reasoning scores, perceptual reasoning scores, listening comprehension, oral expression, all above the 90th percentile. And then here, the challenges, oral reading accuracy, pseudo-word decoding, a measure of phonological awareness, visual matching, subtraction facts, this is the whole picture of dyslexia, and it's a bizarre notion that we spend our time in thinking that dyslexia means this part, when this is this part and parcel of what dyslexia really is. Our hope is that we recognize the whole child and, and realize our mission is to help, help students discover what their really talents are, the extraordinary strengths that, that they have, and they can put all these things together, whether in the workplace or in the classroom. So thank you.